saints. He allowed you to wake up this morning. Hallelujah. He allowed you to rest upon your feet this morning. 
He allowed you to clap your hands this morning. Hallelujah. He allowed us. He allowed us. He allowed us to come together. You don't have to be here. You could be somewhere else. Hallelujah. But the Lord saw fit for you to be in the house of the Lord to give his name the praise. That name is above every name. And at that name, every knee has got to bow. How many know that to be true today? Give me a hand. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus, oh hallelujah, have not been for the Lord on our side. Where will we be today as we pray, as we come and bow our heads before the Lord? Let us remember our pastor, Bishop Ken Groover, Pastor Jeff Davis, and Pastor Homer Brown, and Boss Deacon. Remember all our other ministers and deacons, and all our mothers. Saints and friends and visitors. Remember those out there in Facebook land. Those that are listening. Praise the Lord. He allowed us to come together. Let's remember the full family today. That God will give them strength where there's no strength. Give them hope where there's no hope. Give them determination where there's no determination. Give them power where there's no power. Give them joy where there's no joy. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy, how many know joy? Joy, joy, joy is coming in the morning. Oh, as we bow our heads, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another Lord's Day morning. Lord God, you bless us to come into your house for worship. We thank you, Lord God, that our beds were not made to be our cooling boards. We thank you, Lord God, for eyes to see, ears to hear, feet to walk, to talk. Lord, for a mind to want to be in the house of the Lord one more time. You allowed us to do it, Lord. You allowed us to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us, Lord God, you brought us about the hospitals. Some of us, you brought us out to mental institute. Some of us, you brought us out of prison, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, today. And we come, Lord God, just to lift our heads up, Lord God, and open up our mouths and give your name the praise because you're worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. If you had a thousand tongues, Lord, we wouldn't be able to praise you enough for what you've done for us. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, remember those as we're going to visit today in the nursing home, in the Grand Villa. Bless the ministry there. Bless the prison ministry, Lord God, on Monday nights. Lord God, continue to speak through those men, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to win their souls that they might be saved. That's what it's all about, being saved, being baptized in your name, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues that the Spirit of God let us that we can live according to your word. Oh, realizing there's a way that seemed right to a man, but the end thereof is death. Lord, we want to be right. We want to be whole. We want to live for you. We want hope, Lord God. We want to love one another with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give us that love. Give us that power. Give us that joy. Bless the man of God. He's, he's going to come and stand before your throne this morning. Speak through him the oracles of God. Help him to go through the word of God, line up and line, precept and precept. Oh, God, happen to be hidden in somebody's heart that he may not sin against thee. Lord, bless the choir, Lord God. Give them an angelic song. Lord God, they will pull, Lord God, the hearts of those, Lord God, that are broken, that they may open up their hearts to you and say, Lord, not in my will, but thy will be done. That they may watch up to the altar. Lord, saying, what must I do to be saved? Oh, heck of shayatau. Hallelujah. We feel your presence this morning. We feel your joy. We feel a, a special anointing this morning. Ah, it's going to take place, Lord God. Add to the church daily as you can see to be saved. Lord God, remember those that are not here, those that are sick and can't be here. Heal their bodies. Lord God, hallelujah. Save their souls. Oh, God, you are a healer. You are a healer. You are a healer. You are a healer. Oh, he come. Oh, shayatama. Oh, shayatama. Oh, we just thank you, Lord. Bless us. 
Lord God, we'd be more careful to praise your name henceforth and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say amen. are asleep, that do sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the word of God be edifying to the hearers in Jesus' name.
Lord, lift your hands and tell them, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, more than anything. Just want to tell you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just good to tell the Lord. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I honor you. You've been so good to me. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. We give the Lord, honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we honor our pastors. Praise God. Our Pastor Ken. Praise the Lord. Pastor Brown. And to all the men and women of God. To our first ladies in the house. We just thank God for his goodness. Give him praise in this house. Amen. We thank God for who he is to us. And his many, many wonderful blessings. And praise God when I, when I saw and then Brother Paul, amen, Palmer, walk in the house, praise the Lord, I, made me want to dance, I, I got a pep in my step, and that's for real, for real, so good to see you, brother, amen, it's been going through some things, but amen, after all, God is still good, all the things I, I, I've been through, hallelujah, still got the Lord, and still got to praise Amen. Still got to praise. I say still got to praise. Hallelujah to God. Sometimes we just, we get so discouraged because the mailman didn't come and bring that check on the right day. And we won't praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The people in the grocery store said the wrong thing to you. Praise God. Use the wrong tone. They wasn't cordial. They wasn't, you know how people ought to be. Praise God. They touch you in your wrong place. And and you couldn't praise God, but thank God when we can go through and give God the glory. Give him the glory in this house. Amen. Thank God. Praise God. And certainly our hearts go out to the Fuller family and the loss of our dear mother, Lorraine Fuller. She passed away on night before last. And so let us keep that family in our prayers. And of course, as I get information, I'll pass it to you. Amen. Pass it on to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but show your love. Amen. God has given us one another. Amen. We are who we are because of the grace of God. He made us who we are. We thank God for all of our guests that's here. Amen. God is so good. He's good to us. And thank God for our internet. Amen. Uh, yes. Praise God. We ought to give the Lord some praise. Amen. We thank you for your lights. Praise God. I haven't seen a dislike on Facebook or <laughs> on YouTube yet, but I've seen quite a few likes and got phone calls from people who have been part of our worship. Amen. So uh, we just want uh, the technical team to know that you're not working in vain, that the Lord is blessing. Praise God. Uh, the, word of, the word of God is going out. Amen. And there's benefits and there's Praise God. There's results. God has given results. God is blessing people who can't or won't come. Praise God. God is still in the blessing business. So we give God the praise. Thank everyone. The deacons, the choir. Praise God. The ushers, the musicians. Praise God. The floor vacuumers. And praise God. Somebody got to do this stuff. Amen. This work. Amen. So to go forth. Amen. It's not, you can't just take it for granted that we're able to come into a nice, clean church, praise God, air conditioned, praise God, pretty good. I had a place yesterday, it was so hot. <laughs> I mean, it was hot. Nice place, but it was hot, praise God. So I'm so glad for what God has given, has given us. God has been good to us, praise God. We know at one point, I'm just talking that thing. And then at one point, one of our units wasn't working, praise God. And, you know, we had called the man, and I don't know what happened. It, it just didn't get fixed. And Sister Didi asked me, said, you know, we, we, got the, uh, we got the pipe diffuse coming in. These air conditions aren't working. What are we going to do? Hallelujah. What we did was pray. And, and that unit, is it still working? Is it still working? JP, it's working? It's working. <laughs> God is so good to me. 
Is he good to you? God is so good to me. I don't serve man. Come on now. I don't deserve. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we love you. We thank you for all your goodness and for all your mercy. Lord, we thank you for taking care of us as a unit, as a church, as a body. We thank you, Lord, for preparing, providing all of our needs, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, your love. Glory to God, unfailing love that you have for your people not just your church for the world. We thank you for this corner that you've given us to worship, to reach out. Lord, as we bring an offering to you to further the gospel, to further this word, to sustain the things that you've given to us, we ask your blessings upon this offering to consecrate, to dedicate this offering. Bless it in a mighty way we pray. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, amen. The angels will lead us in the choir of blessings. So good, say. So good, I just can't tell it all. So good, so good, I just can't tell it all. So good, so good, I just can't tell it all. He's been so good, so so good, I just can't tell it all. Time to tell you how you saved my soul. Not enough time to tell you how you made me whole. Not enough time to tell you how you set me free. He's been, He's been so good to me. He's been so good, so good. So good. I just can't tell it all. So good. So good. I just can't tell it so good, so good, so good. I just came. I just can't tell it all. Not enough time to tell you I saved my soul. Not enough time to tell you I made me whole. Not enough time to tell you I set me free. He's been, he's been so good to me. So good, 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 so good
got to tell it all. He can't go. He can't tell it all. 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 St. Luke, the second chapter, that 22nd verse reads, And when the time was for their purification and the baby and the baby to be dedicated, they came according to the law of Moses and brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The Lord Jesus himself, and that 
18th chapter of St. Luke said, and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked him. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid, forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I say to you parents, may you stop for the parents. Do you, to, do you today recognize this baby as a gift of God and give God heartfelt thanks for his wonderful blessings to you? Do you dedicate this baby to the Lord and give her her to both of you, surrendering her to the hope that she will belong wholly to God? Do you pledge as parents that with the Lord's help you will bring up this child in discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and with love to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord in your life. Jesus. I say to you all that are standing here before God in this congregation, do you promise God's helping you to make your regular prayer that by God's grace, this child will come up trusting in Christ alone and pray that by his own choice, her own choice, she will be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of her sins, and that she will receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, praise God, for, for the fulfillment of all the promises that God has promised this dearly beloved child. precious name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we do come to you. We come to you for your help. We come to you for your guidance. We need your help in this complex world. We need your guidance, Lord, to protect this, our child. Oh, God, as we stand here, praise God, as we Dear Lord, she needs you more and more. She needs you more than we needed you. Oh, this world, this world, Father, we need your help. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Would you help us, Jesus? You stay there, I see you. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we give you all.
praise God. Let's give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful. We give your children to God. Amen. Now it's come time for the word of God. The Bible tells us that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proclaims out of the mouth of God. And we thank God that we have our, praise God, our pastor and evangelism here today. And I encourage you all to sit back close. I encourage you all to just sit on the edge of your seat, praying, looking for God's blessing as the man of God bring forth the word of God. But before he comes, this Yvonne Perrin is going to bring our
Come on, come on, sing. God promised. God promised. Hallelujah. And he's not a man that he shall lie. Not the son of man that he shall repent. God promised. I said he promised. Hallelujah. 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 I'll heal the land. I'll heal the land. Hey, hallelujah. 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 I wish I had about 20 people that would stand up and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. I'll heal it. I'll heal it. I'll heal it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Hallelujah. You can praise him. Ain't no harm in praising him. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. Certain we honor the Lord today. God our Father. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I don't care what anybody else say. God said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, I'll heal it. Hallelujah. I'll heal it. I'll do a new thing. I'll heal it. Have I not said it? Shall I not do it? Oh, hallelujah. 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 We honor the Lord today. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank God for his Holy Spirit, which is in this house. We honor our Bishop Ken in his absence, Pastor Jeffrey Davis, his companion, to the elders, the ministers of the gospel, to my companion, Lady Robin Brown, to our choir, musicians, deacons, mothers, missionaries, sisters, brothers, to our visitors, to our children, to those that are listening over social media, it's good to be here. Tell somebody, I feel the Lord in this house. It's good to be here. I, I believe somebody can get a miracle today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We, we have a scripture today in the book of St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Go get, try to get out your way today. Look like I ain't seen y'all a long time. Y'all been on vacation? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to share something of what the Lord has been kind of putting in my mind and in my spirit.
Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 6 and 11 and 12. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that shall come? Or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again these things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Six verse, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Verse 11, Jesus says to his disciples, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. I want to call your attention back to that third verse as John is speaking. And said unto them, say unto him, Art thou he that shall come, or do we look for another? I want to, as a thought, give you a question today. Are you looking for another? Are you looking for another? Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I come today as humble as I know how, Lord God, and I come before your people, Lord God, your people, not my people, but your people who are called by your name. Lord, some have come today seeking something in their spirit, needing something to go on, to run on, to see what the end's going to be. Some are hurting in their body, looking for healing. Some are looking for deliverance. Some are looking for joy in life. Someone is looking to be saved. Somebody's looking to be delivered. There's all kinds of needs in this house. And you are the only one who has promised and can fulfill your promise that I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. You are the one, God, that can drive out the spirits that plague us try to stop us, to try to block us. And so now, Lord, for this period of time, we ask for your help. We ask that you would remove, oh God, any hindrance, anything that would block or try to stop. We ask that you would bless us in this place and bless us in your word. And Lord, we shall be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Are you looking for another? I could have switched that into a positive way and said something like, uh, I have nothing else or nowhere else to go. But we've been dealing with coming back home. And as we deal with coming back home, we deal not only with the people who are physically left, but sometimes people can mentally leave you. People can be in relationships and not even be connected. Have left the building. Done with the relationship. It's the same with church. People can be in the house of God and have been here for years. 
and yet have found a place where they have reached a point where they are disconnected. You can tell because they start saying, what are they doing? What do they have going on? People will leave you in a minute, in a moment, in a heartbeat and still be with you. Be with you in presence, but not totally there. Why do people leave and why are people so fickle nowadays? Why is it that people can't wait a little while, suffer a little while, go through a little while, put up with a little stuff, hang on just a little bit longer? We want instant gratitude. If it don't work right now, maybe we ought to try something else. It will be amazing to you that how many people still clap their hands and praise God and worship God, but still need something else. Mm, I better be careful here because I don't want to talk about going to the lodge or the frat house. Oh, I get myself in trouble, don't I? Still looking for something else. It would seem like we would know that God is enough. I can only talk like this because I can uh, find my own self sometime looking, looking for another. Because I'm a smart guy. I like to study. I like to read. I like to look at stuff. And, and, and all this stuff is popping up now. All this different type of knowledge and all this different type of of understanding and all these different types of, of wisdom and all these things are coming up if I didn't know any better. The Bible says, except the days be shortened, the very elect will be the seed. It talks about people looking for another Christ because maybe this Christ don't do like you want him to do. If I can't get it when I want it, and how I want it. If he don't move like I want him to move, then maybe I got the wrong God. And there's enough churches and enough religion and enough a different type of Christianity until it's like a grocery store. You can pick your choice of what you want. But I don't know about you. I don't want my choice. I want the real thing. God, I wish I had about five or six people. They're trying to figure out where I'm going. It's the, the, the things that come with it sometimes because we want the, the highway. We want the good way. We want the best way with the less pain. But it don't go that way. Man that's born of a woman. Oh, it's over a few days and they're full of trouble. Don't you ever think you're going to live this life and not have trouble. Not have suffering. Not have pain. Because these are the things and the way of life. Stuff going to happen. Things going to go bad. Things going to go down. Somebody put out a lie and said, if you got Jesus, you get saved, you get the Holy Ghost, you don't have any more trouble. Sometimes we tell that lie, well, maybe not y'all, but somebody told that lie, just need to get saved, baby. If you get saved, everything's going to be all right. And yes, it's going to be all right. But everybody got to have some trouble. Everybody going to have some opposition. Everybody going to go through some stuff because of sin. Sin separates us from God. And so you have the opposition of sin. And then when you try to get right, you got a devil. You got stuff that opposes you. And it would be all right if the devil would just do his business by itself. But he'll get in folks. <laughs> he'll 
He'll get in people. He'll get in not folks that are far away, but he'll get right up in your house. I wish I had a witness up in the house here. Am I talking right here? He will make you think that maybe I got the wrong thing. Maybe apostolicism is not good for me. Maybe I need to go. Because you would be surprised of how many people I've been out on the field for about 30 years. And there's some folk who are left because they want to go smoke a cigarette. Because we tell them that, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, if any man defile that temple, he will be destroyed. And so we tell you and say, hey, don't, don't leave, leave them things alone. They got you. Anything that you can't stop that's hurting you, got you. I don't care if it's wild Irish rose. I don't care if it's liquor. I don't care if it's beer. I don't care if it's another person. I don't care if it's another thing. I don't care if it's some dope. I don't care what it is. If you can't control it or manage it, it got you. Oh, God, I preach it hard here. And so when it controls you and you, 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 you're having problems and, and what they would do would leave the truth. Because you say, let me put some oil on your lips and let me pray for that nicotine demon to come out. He said, well, there's nothing in the scripture about smoking cigarettes. It said, drink a little wine for your And Solomon had a thousand wives. Well, I can't have one and one on the side and another on the other side. <laughs> Would depart from the faith, give it heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. Oh, I'm preaching hard now. Y'all just go with me just a little bit, okay? And you tell folk the truth. Because you want them to enjoy Jesus, enjoy the life, enjoy the salvation, get the blessings, get the miracles, and come on, let's just love the Lord together. They departed because he wanted to smoke cigarettes, and over at that church, They departed because at that church, if you need your lung cut, the brothers will come and cut your lung. If you had a problem with your roof, the church would get together and come and have a roof party. I didn't come here to get my roof fixed. I didn't come here to get my yard cut. I come to be saved. I come to be Holy Ghost filled. I come to fellowship with the saints. I come to find me somebody that lift him up until he show up. Because when he show up, he's liable to do anything. I don't know what you come here for, but I come to lift him up. I come to clap my hands. I come to give him praise. Is there anybody come to worship God? And even in worshiping God, stuff happens. And it don't seem right because I didn't do nothing what I think to deserve this bad. I didn't do nothing to deserve this kidney thing or this illness or this sickness. I didn't do nothing to lose my loved one. I didn't do nothing to have trouble on the job. 
But the Bible says, all that live godly. Any godly folks in the house? I wish I had some help, man. Oh, God, I'm, I must be a, see, I go to me too many places, and then I find myself preaching the wrong sermon at the wrong place. That live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But the Bible said rejoice. And again I say rejoice that you are partakers in Christ. Hallelujah suffering. That's why Paul said we glory in tribulation. Why? Because whatever seems to be working out for my bad, God is turning around for my good. Glory to God. I wish I had some help in the house. Hallelujah. Have God ever turned something bad around for you? Well, you ought to give him a little praise. The devil gets in folk and there's certain expectations we have. There's certain things that we desire and we want and God will give it to us because if we delight ourselves in him, he'll give us the desires of our heart. But sometimes you got to go through some stuff because there's a problem sitting right before the blessing. Ah, oh God, I wish I could. Before they can get to the promised land, there's a problem. But what folk don't like, the problem. Why I got to have the problem? Why can't I just Because the problem transformed you. The problem lets you know you didn't get here by yourself. The problem allows you to understand that it's the Lord that makes a way for us. It's the Lord that gets the praise. It's the Lord that's blessing us. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. It's the Lord. Somebody say, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord that keeps on making a way. It's the Lord that keeps on waking me up. It's the Lord that keeps me praising when my body is hurting and racking in pain. I don't know the Lord's ways. And sometimes the Lord takes us through strange places and things and what some folk do when they find themselves in a strange place they're ready to look for something else I didn't sign up for this I wasn't looking for this I asked them for a blessing and now I got a problem God get my secret but I praise you hallelujah Understanding that the problem comes with the blessing. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Anybody got a problem in the house? Get ready for your blessing. Anybody got a problem in the house? Get ready for it. Oh, you got so many problems. Yeah, boy, look at the blessings that's coming. All these blessings shall come on us and shall overtake us. I'm on the verge of a miracle. I'm on the verge of a blessing. How you know? Because I got a problem. But people can't endure. I don't know what happened to it. We got so soft. The Bible said the children all night Oh, oh wow. you brought us out here to die. And our children, you could have left us where we was. Not understanding that the Lord just brought you 40 years through a wilderness. And the same Lord that brought you this far, I can guarantee you he won't leave you. He's going to take you all the way. Anybody want to go all the way? Get a little snag. 
and you give up. You quit. 5,000 people left Jesus in one day. One day over fish and bread. He spoke a word, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood. The flesh is the word. You got to eat the word because that's how you resist the devil, by the word. God, I praise you. And then you have to drink the blood. And you say, drink the blood. That's the suffering. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And the whole world go free? You got to suffer. Why is you suffering? Imagine this. He told the prophet to go to the potter's house. And when he got to the potter's house, the potter had clay on the wheel. You know what the clay was doing? Spit it. I don't know what is going on. Child, I don't know what's happening. Just stuff just keep on happening. And then he had his hand on the clay. And then he was pressing it. He was molding it. He was shaping it. Sticking his finger all up in there. Hand all up in there. Squaring it up and rounding it off. And somebody asked and say, can the clay say to the potter, why did you make me like this? Doesn't the potter have power over the clay? Lord, make me what you want me to be. Fix me like you want to fix me. Bless me like you want to bless me. Help me like you want to help me. Do it your way. God, I wish I had somebody to help. Y'all want the Lord to fix you your way. Hallelujah. But he want to fix you his way. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he was pressing it. And it don't seem joyous. But when he get through with you. Lord, I praise you. After he have tried me. I shall come forth. Like pure gold. I wish I had somebody in the house here that understanding that God is making you. God is shaping you. God is getting you ready. Uh, I wish I had about 10 people said, make me ready, Lord. Make me ready. Make me, make me ready. Get me ready. Get me ready. But people have become so weak now because you got to out. You don't have to be apostolic. You can go down there where you can drink and get drunk. You, you can have a spirit-filled church without any Holy Spirit. Everybody just come in. get Yeah, get that other spirit. Get a little drink. I'm going to just tell the truth here. Hallelujah. When I first came, I came and I had to smoke a little weed first. <laughs> and when I come in, I had a spirit. But it wasn't like their spirit. Glory to God. My spirit wore off. But I saw another spirit. And I said, I don't want this spirit. I want the same spirit that they got. Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost. Even Peter and his disciples. Oh, we'll never leave you, Jesus. We're going to be with you always, Jesus. Everybody else may leave, Peter say. But I ain't going nowhere. I'm down with you. And Jesus said, before the crow, crow three times. You got to watch what you say, and you got to do what you say. If you say you're going to hang in there, hang in there. I can hear Deacon Carson now. I believe I'll run on. See what the end is going to be. We got any running on people in the house? God, I'm. Peter said, I'll never leave you. 
He meant well. And then the Bible tells us, in the book of Matthew, Jesus had told us before, he said, take up your cross. Any man come after me, take up your cross and follow me. And a lot of times we don't even know what that means. Around here with no wooden cross. So what cross are you talking about? And even Jesus with his cross, did you know that somebody had to come and take it? He's not talking about necessarily that cross. He's talking about the stuff you got to go through. The stuff you got to endure. The stuff people say about you, the way people treat you, the way people put you down, the way people do stuff. Them same people that were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord and laying all the palm trees down. After they had beat him and whipped him and blooded him and spit on him and, and, and did all that nasty stuff to him, splitting uh, blood, just running down and all over and took off his clothes and put on him a robe and mocked and laughed at him. So the Bible said there was no beauty that anybody should desire. Got him to a point where nobody wanted him. Nobody wanted to call on his name. Nobody wanted to pray to him. Nobody. They looked at him and they wagged their head. What do you do when you try to help folk? What do you do when you gave your best for people? What do you do when you did all you could do for your kin folks and everybody else you love? And yet at the same time, when they see you down, they just put you down. They wag their head. Look at him. He saved everybody else. He can't even save himself. Look at him. The one that was going to destroy the temple. Look at him. The cross was the ridicule. It was the shame because the Bible tells us that for the, uh, the, the, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross despising the shame. Sometimes you're going to be shamed. Sometimes folk going to look at you just like y'all looking at me now. And they say, well, he ain't really preaching right now. But I'm preaching the hardest I know how. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth and shaming the devil. It's a shame in this thing. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be put down. Not by folks from the outside. Because David said, I could have took it if it came from an enemy. But it came from the same people that walked in the house of God with me. The same people who danced with me. The same people who lifted their hands and said, hallelujah. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know who's doing it. But one thing I do know, I want to be saved. One thing I do know, I want to stay with the Lord. One thing I do know, I want to go all the way. Oh, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't understand. You, you, you got to be willing to go all the way. No matter what comes. No matter what goes, no matter who leaves, no matter who turns around, no matter what happens. We got this thing now. And it's about church as a formal institution. But I come to tell you, he's bigger than the church. I got to come to tell you, it's not about where we sit on the earth, but it's where we sit in heavenly places. I'm trying to tell us that Zion is calling us to a higher place. I'm trying to tell you, you got to lift up your worship. You got to lift up your love. You got to lift up your praises. You got to be in this for real. You got to give him the glory for real. And your suffering 
It's your suffering. It's not your blessings. It's your suffering that tells where you are. Is it anybody who can have arthritis and still give him the praise? Anybody who can have cancer and still give him the praise? Anybody going through hell? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But still give him the praise. Disliked. Talked about. Misused. Abused. But I still got my praise. Anybody still got their praise? I still can worship him. Don't feel good. Broke. Hallelujah. Got a lot of enemies. Don't know how I'm going to make it. Not enough food on the table. But hallelujah. Didn't come tell somebody I didn't come this far to quit. I didn't come this far to give up. In fact, I threw in the towel, but give me my towel back. Hallelujah. Some of y'all have quit. You're giving up. You're still sitting in here. You're still going through the ritual and going through the motion. But whatever you do for the master, it ought to be real. I'm not going to let nobody, not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not a bishop, not an apostle, not a deacon, not a brother, not a sister. I'm not going to let nobody stop my praise. I wish I had some bold folk that stand up here and act like you in the, I, I, I didn't know what they call that in the ghetto. And let somebody, I ain't let nobody stop my praise. Nobody. 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 Been too good. Nobody. No, 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 nobody. The Lord said there'll come a time when they put you out of the synagogue. Hallelujah. Throw me out of here. I'll stand outside and praise him. I'll get in my car and praise him. I'll drive back to Coco praising him. And when I get to Coco, I'll praise him some more. Is there a praise in the house? Is there worship in the house? Is there anybody here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me a little while. Hallelujah. 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 Let yourself go. Break yourself. If you keep there and sit there and stay there, you're going to be dry right there. You're going to die right there spiritually. But if you get up and give him praise, if you open your mouth, the Lord will touch you. Not tomorrow, not tonight, but he'll touch you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stop being cute. Stop being fine. Stop being so ditty. And give God the praise. Get ugly with him. Let him know I got nothing to hold me back. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is a good place for a miracle. This is a good place for a blessing. This is a good place for some healing. This is a good place for salvation.
Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, in our story, John the Baptist, let me just close it out. John the Baptist. I have much more to say, but hallelujah. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus. He had one purpose. God brought him for one purpose. And his purpose was to proclaim Jesus. He was the forerunner. In fact, when Mary the virgin got pregnant, she went to Elizabeth, her cousin's house. And when she walked in, her cousin was six months pregnant. And when she walked in and she saluted Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And John, inside of his mama womb, start dancing, start shouting, start leaping, couldn't talk, but knew how to praise. Before Jesus was born, John went to his duty. And his duty was to proclaim, to set the stage for Jesus. So he went out into the wilderness, put on camera hair for clothes, ate wild honey and locusts. He was out there baptizing the folks. He baptized them in the baptism of repentance. Repent for he's coming. Repent for he's coming. Repent for he's coming. Repent for he's coming. And the Pharisees saw it and they said, are you he? He said, no, sir. He said, I'm not the one. But there's come one coming after me. He's going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Ghost. Then there came a day John was baptizing. And he looked around and saw him. There's the Lamb of God who comes. Hey, there's. And Jesus told him, John, put me in the water. And he wanted it. John probably knew, said, You don't need to repent, Jesus. He said, But put me in the water anyway, for we must fulfill all scripture. Baptized Jesus. Jesus rose up out of the water. The heavens opened up and God spoke. This is my beloved son, whom I well please. Hear ye him. And John continues to go about doing his duty, not understanding his mission was complete. That it was over. So Herod one day, God allowed to arrest him, put him in jail. But he was scared to kill him because the people thought he was a prophet. So he kept him in jail. And John would preach from the jail. You can't tell folk the truth nowadays. He said, is you crazy, Herod? You don't marry your brother's wife. And Herod still wouldn't mess with him, but the brother's wife got upset. And so one day they were having a party, and she sent her daughter to do the dance. Know what kind of dance it was? I don't know if it was the funky chicken, or the, the wash machine. Sticky leg, I don't know what it was. Turned it out. And Herod say, Girl, no, he didn't say that. He said, You did so wonderful. Ask me for anything but my kingdom, 
And the mama had already fixed it. And said, give me John the Baptist's head. Kill him. When you, we don't like to tell folk the truth now. Because they'll kill you. They cut you off. They stop listening to you. Tell other folks about you. Tell a lie on you. So something we don't say in church anymore. Something we don't preach on anymore. It's not political correct. But it's biblically right. Because we don't like to lose folk. I think I'd have lost my mind, to be honest with you, if I had 5,000 people that walked away in one day. I had a 5,000-member church, and we don't built this cathedral, and they left in one day. And I'm trying to figure out how we're going to pay the lights, the water. <laughs> Give me John the Baptist's head. And John was sitting in jail and his disciples were there with him. And he said, hold on. What have I done wrong? Did I do right? I proclaimed him. I witnessed for him. I gave him a tithe. I'm just saying for other folk, not for John. Tithes and offering. You've done everything. Right. Except you got to trust God. Let God have his way. Why should I let him have my way? Because you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Not with corruptible things like silver and gold, but you've been bought by the precious blood of the Lamb. My body belongs to God. My mind, I ain't saying nothing. He can do whatever he wants to do with me. Go ask him. Maybe we should look for something else. And that was my question for you today. Because you've suffered some things. And you are suffering some things. And you're going through some stuff. And you've got some issues. And you've got some problems. And you've got some stuff that you don't understand. Are you looking for another? Now, y'all tired of me. But you ask two people. Are you looking for another? Sometimes I'll be wanting to ask Sister Brown because I don't do right. Are you looking for another? <laughs> ask somebody around you. Ask somebody else. Say, are you looking for another? Or is Jesus good enough? 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 He said, go tell John what you see. The blind see. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. Hallelujah. And tell him also, bless. Let me say it again. Bless. Let me say it one more time. Bless is he that is not offended. In me. Been too good to me, Mother Bo Right. Been too good to me. Been too good to me. I'm not offended. Come on, let us stand today. Hallelujah. I'm not offended of the things I suffer for Christ's sake. I'm not offended. I look around and I see. Everybody has suffered trauma. Everybody's been through something. And some of y'all going through some hard stuff right now. 
but God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted more than you are able. And with every temptation, I said every. No, the Bible says every temptation. God will provide a way of escape. Hallelujah. Get ready for your blessing. Get ready for your miracle. I said get ready. Y'all don't look like you expected anything. Anybody? Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Today I just feel like we, we want to honor those and help those that want to be saved. But I wanted you to be encouraged today. And I want you to understand that you are nowhere that God doesn't know where you are. He knows exactly where you are. Mentally, spiritually, I know where you are. And all he has to do is speak a word. And it'll turn around in a minute, in a second. But if you don't speak a word, he's able to keep you from falling. Might be somebody in the house today that don't know God like we know God. You don't know him and the pardon of your sins, that he's a loving God, that while you were yet sinners,